Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Pastor Mike here. Um, a little before noon, or as right as at noon, uh, getting ready for midday prayer. Uh, we'll give folks just an opportunity to gather up and join us. Let me know you're there. Uh, you can put your name or a comment in the comments section, and then I'll know that you're online with us. Um, and um, yeah, also, if you would like to include anyone on our prayer list, uh, when we get to the prayers portion of our time together, um, please put their name in the comments and we will be glad to, uh, I'll be glad to uh, include those names as we pray together. Um, I see a couple have joined us. Terry and Linda are both there. So um, where two or three are gathered in Jesus's name, Jesus shows up. Uh, so we are, uh, and there's Lynn. Uh, hello to you as well. Uh, and peace and joy and hope and blessings to all that are joined together here. Um, so we'll start as we center ourselves for our time together. And uh, as we breathe in the breath of God, and we breathe out our cares and our concerns, and we breathe in the love of God, and we breathe out our doubts and our despairs, and we breathe in the life of God, and we breathe out our fears and our frustrations. So today's um, scripture, I want us to uh, to hear and to um, kind of have as in the back of our minds uh, and reflect on. Uh, welcome, Gene. Good to see you. Um, comes from Psalm 37. I'm going to start with the first verse and read through the ninth verse. Um, and the, the uh, superscription in the Bible I'm using says this is an exhortation to patience and trust. Um, patience is not one of my spiritual gifts, as I tell people. Um, uh, trust is a gift from God. So uh, it's a it thought, it felt for at least for me and maybe for you and these times that are so tumultuous um, when it's sometimes hard to be patient and sometimes hard to trust that God has is going to be there and uh, work in and through the mess that we have on this side of the of the heavens. Um, I thought maybe it'd be a good idea for us just to hear some words that would remind us about how we should be able to um, be patient and, um, and trust. And also maybe uh, that together we might pray that we can, that God will give us the strength to do both of those things. So hear the words of the psalmist. Do not fret because of the wicked, do not be envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good so that you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the light and the justice of your cause like the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off. And those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Now, I can imagine that this might be a hymn or a psalm. Psalms are hymns. This might be a hymn that our ancient Israelite siblings would have heard, maybe as they were wandering in the wilderness and as they're experiencing life not as they had imagined it would be when they were freed from, from um, captivity in Egypt. But instead, life that has been filled with disappointment and life that has been filled with heartache and life that has been filled with all kinds of brokenness. And so I can imagine that this hymn, for, for example, um, would have been kind of a soothing thing, um, you know, at least uh, would help prop them up in their days when they wonder, um, when is it and how is it that God is going to act to fulfill God's promises? And that's a, it's a valid question for uh, any of us to ask, I think. It's a valid question for us to ponder ourselves in our time, um, where just as it seems we're learning to live with a, 
a virus that doesn't seem to ever want to be abated. Um, you know, you, and we think that when the worst is over, then we are shown that the worst has yet to even come maybe as war breaks out and as we um, continue to live in a, in a world that is so broken and turned in, in, in on and against itself in such a way that um, maybe we even find ourselves wondering if God has just abandoned this, this place that we call earth. Um, and so we are encouraged to um, do some things. What is it? Uh, not to fret. Uh, we're encouraged to trust and commit ourselves to that trust and to be still. And in other words, be still sometimes just means don't try to fix it ourselves, but instead um, rely on the, the work of God in and through uh, all kinds of other folks, maybe even, uh, to, do that, uh, to do that work of reconciliation and that work of peacemaking. Um, I'm hopeful that God's work will, um, peacemaking work will um, uh, soon be something that we see as a reality in the situation in Ukraine. Uh, I'm hoping that um, that same peacemaking reality we will see on the streets of cities and towns where our siblings can uh, tend to be shooting at one another and killing one another left and right, um, where um, those who are elected into positions of of power um, tend to be, at least seems to me sometimes to be only focused on retaining that power instead of using that power for the good of, of those who elected them. Um, I think it's a time for us to to really pray, to join together in, in unison pray that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, and, and I know for me, when I repeat the Lord's Prayer, when I get to that point in the prayer, that's when things get I found myself praying most fervently that uh, God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I'm also reminded uh, every day, and maybe today it's through the sunshine and the warm air. It's through, uh, we just had our men's breakfast this morning. It was a great time and uh, uh, where we shared faith and we prayed for one another and, and did so very publicly in a space that um, um, might have even, maybe we even touched some folks just who overheard our conversations. But in any case, we, um, we joined together and we were fed spiritually and physically. Uh, and those were all God moments. And so I think sometimes our be in our being still, we find those God moments and we are able to then remember that uh, we are loved by a God who is faithful beyond everything else and, and gives us the faith we need to rely on that same faithfulness that God has. And I think that's a lot of what our folks from Camp Hill are going to sing to us about. Um, we, I've played this song before. It's been several weeks ago. Uh, it's very poignant, I think, and, and very soothing. It's called Remember Me. And um, and so I, I hope you will enjoy it as you um, hear it. And then we'll get back together and pray. Again, if you'd like to include anyone specifically in our prayers, you can put their names in the comments, and I will include them in our prayer time. So here are our friends from Camp Hill, and then we'll get back together and pray.
remember me when the color of a sunset fills the sky. Remember me when you pray and tears of joy fall from your eyes. And age to age and heart to I've remembered you, remember me. Those are words of um, promise from our most gracious God. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, first of all, we give you thanks for this beautiful day that you have given over to us. Um, the sun reminds us of life, uh, life that is promised in and through you and through your son, Jesus Christ. It also reminds us that in those moments where the clouds seem thick, much like the fog even seemed this morning, that your love for us will burn through that and will always triumph over everything that we experience in this life. And we ask God that you give us faith to trust in that love. The slide also reminds us that you do remember us. You remember us when we are well. You remember us when we are faithful. And you remember us when we are sick and in need of your healing touch. And so, God, we ask that you remember all these that we're going to name um, and that you provide and surround them with this healing presence that will let them know that they are remembered and that they are in the process of being healed by you. So we pray for Ron and Don, Amy, Betty Rosenthal, Judy Kelly, Robert Simpson, Carol Darian, Lori Sheraton and family, Ken Buck, Kathy, Margaret Folkemer, Laura Dareth, Terry, Ben Lehman, Howard Fales, Rebecca Neal, Jeff, Glenn Hardesty, Connie and Herb Koss, McKenna Day, Barbara Dareth, Jane Cox, Lauren Mueller, Woody and Charlotte Wallach, Sabrina, Belvia Goodrich, Sean Fitzsimmons, Mia Zinn and family, Trent, Donna, Dave and Nancy, Lynn Smith, Jared and Samantha, Linda Heitzelman, Peggy Helwig, Shirley Hillman, Taylor Carapalucci, Ashley Watts, and those that we name aloud are silently in our hearts at this time. 
Pastor Charlene, Pastor Kelly, the people of Ukraine. And God, we thank you for your gift of life everlasting, a life that begins as you breathe life into us and and never comes to an end, a life that even death cannot bring to an end. Um, give all those who are mourning um, your, your peace and your hope through your promised resurrection. And now, God, we join together and we pray words that our Lord Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, God, we breathe in the breath of God, and we breathe out our tension and our turmoil. And we breathe in the love of God, and we breathe out our haste and our apprehension, and we breathe in the life of God, and we breathe out our work and our worry. Well, thank you for being with us at Midday Prayer today. I uh, look forward to seeing some of you in person on Sunday at worship and maybe others online at worship. I won't be able to see you, but I'll know that you're there. Um, and um, so we'll see you at worship. Uh, Pastor Tamika will be with you next Monday for Midday Prayer. I'll be with you on Wednesday and Friday. Uh, and until then, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great rest of your Friday and a great weekend. We'll see you next week. God bless.